Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we're going to be looking at EQs, briefly. Uh, just a basic sort of introduction to what EQs are and, uh, and how you can use them. So to sort of kick things off, uh, I guess the best way to describe EQs is just a device that deals with volume changes uh, in separate frequency regions. Um, instead of the fader, for example, if we go to the mix window, instead of the fader, the fader will deal with volume changes that affect the signal overall. But of course, as we know, sound consists of a multitude of frequencies between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, at least audible sound for the human hearing range. And uh, sometimes you want to be able to affect certain ranges of this, uh, this spectrum. So that's where equalizers come in. Um, an equalizer is a device uh, that consists of multiple filters. Now a filter is a device that can filter out <coughs> excuse me, filter out unwanted frequencies. So a filter consists uh, a uh, EQ consists of multiple filters. Um, that all filter out a certain part of the EQ spectrum. So we're just going to take a quick look at the EQ3, the 7 band EQ3 plugin, which comes native with Pro Tools. So everyone who has Pro Tools will have this plugin, uh, which is why I want to look at it. And this is also a very flexible, you know, very um, standard uh, EQ that we can put a benchmark from. So we've got an input gain. Um, which uh, can be useful if you just want to uh, sometimes there'll be a built-in sort of circuitry emulation where you can drive it a little more. You also have a uh, phase switch here so you can switch the polarity. And then we're going to go and meet our first filter types. These are uh, originally uh, the first filters that were ever made in the analog circuitry and they're basically um, high, uh, well we've got a high pass filter and a low pass filter and what they do is quite indicative in the name as you can see in this uh, uh, frequency response graph here when we engage the high pass filter and then we can sweep the frequency out it's going to be cutting all the frequencies below this point here. This point is called the cutoff and is defined by a point which is when 3 dB of attenuation has uh, occurred. Now there are several controls, as you can see we've got the frequency control where you can sweep it through the frequency spectrum and this is of course sweeping the cutoff frequency which is represented by this grey dot here. Uh, and then we also have the slope control. Uh, high pass filters um, have a slope control usually. Some are fixed in some analog circuits they're fixed, but usually in a digital uh, system like this uh, you will have some kind of control over the the rate at which it attenuates. There's no such thing as an absolute brick wall filter. Uh, it, it can be done, I guess, in digital audio, just because we're dealing with zeros and ones, but uh, in the physical real world it is impossible to actually create a block uh, where at which point nothing uh, passes through the circuitry. Anyway, the slope is, is denominated by dB per octave. So as you can see, we can move through from 6 dB to 12 dB per octave to 18, and then finally in this plugin, 24 dB per octave. And you can see it, it sort of sharpens down the slope. Um, this can be good if you, uh, you know, good to play around with these if you want to, you know, just cut off the very low frequencies in a bass drum, for example, but you still want to keep all the impact that's around here in the 40 hertz range. Um, but you, you sort of have to find a compromise because the, the steeper the slope, the more noticeable the, um, the filter is going to be. And then, of course, conversely, you have high pass filter, which is just exactly the opposite. Um, so these are pass filters. Um, which are very common. You find them in, you know, most DJ decks and stuff like that. You know, the whole sort of 
sweeping uh, effect. Uh, a lot of times they will have uh, introduced a resonance, which is at steeper slopes. You can also get a little bump here, uh, which this EQ doesn't actually incorporate, but um, a lot of filters have that, so you can really hear the frequency where the cutoff is, so you get that kind of uh, uh, filtering. And then also we can change between a bandpass EQ as well. A bandpass, as you can see, um, will filter out a range of frequencies in between another range of frequencies. So this can be useful if, for example, you have uh, just something that just sounds awful in the mid-range, for example, you can just cut all that out because you know you're going to be f filling it in with something else. To be honest, I mean, I've, I've never actually used the bandpass filter, but you can use it for some pretty cool effects. Uh, moving along, we've got the low filter here, which defaults as a shelving filter in this EQ. Um, you have a frequency control and you have a gain control. Now, as you can see, uh, a shelving filter will raise, will gain up the signal by a certain amount and then keep that signal, that gain constant from that frequency onwards. Again, the crossover point is defined by as a point with um, uh, plus or minus 3 dB uh, attenuation. So you can see the frequency here will hit right, slap, bang. Actually, yeah, in these, it's, it's right in the middle. Uh, and uh, of course, in this, this um, EQ, you have a, a plus minus 12 gain um, possible to give. Now here, we are going to see another control called the Q control. Now the Q factor, Q stands for quality. And um, as you can see, it will uh, you can actually flatten it out like that. I've never really gone to that extreme with it before. Um, as you can see, you are adjusting the slope. So it's much like the slope control, but the Q control, um, it's, it's more of a bandwidth um, control. And you'll understand why I call it that when we get to parametric filters, which are these here in the middle. Uh, so in the low, fre uh, low frequency and high frequency bands, um, you can choose either between shelving or a parametric band. All the others here are parametrics, and parametrics are the most common um, EQ band out there. So you still have the frequency, and as you can see, you're sweeping a bell through the frequency spectrum. Um, and now, the Q control, which I, I think of as the bandwidth control, becomes quite apparent. Uh, why I call it that. As you narrow it up, the higher the value, the narrower it gets, and the lower the value, the wider it gets. So this, this is a way that you can really isolate down a frequency. If you want to really find, say there's a problem frequency, say you have a snare, and this will happen a lot, you, you'll have a snare, and every time the drummer hits it, there's this awful ringing tone in the snare. You can sweep through find that tone and then as soon as you found that frequency where it's really jumping out and almost you know blowing up your face uh, just pull it back down with a really narrow cue and then adjust just to make sure that you get rid of that ringing sound as much as possible that's that's a very technical sort of cleaning up use of EQ um, let's for example look at uh, let's say we have this piano track which is in the background. I'll let you guys have a quick listen to it and then we're gonna see if we can uh, clean it up a bit. It sounds very sort of retro.